You're watching Oilers Nation every day with Tyler Uremchuk. Your one-stop shop for all things Oilers. Tickets? Tickets? Oh, sorry. I was out front trying to scalp my tickets to the Mullet Arena tonight. Let's get into it with the lead. Uh, welcome into Oilers Nation, every a live from a hotel in Arizona. I am actually trying to get rid of one of my tickets for tonight's game against the Coyotes. So if you're looking and you're willing to pay an arm and a leg, hit me up. Welcome into the show. We're taking the Sports Closet Studio on the road. And as I did that version of the lead, I could see both Jay and Liam shaking their heads down in the corner. So I will bring them in right now. Did we not like that version of the lead? Was it not good? This is going to date myself. So anyone who's an older uh, uh, soul, Edmonton fan. I don't, mm. You wouldn't know this before your time, Liam. I don't even know if you're an Edmonton. Will you, or anytime I hear tickets, tickets, I hear it in a certain like dialect, and it's that guy with the Jerry Curl mullet <laughs> who always just stand outside of Rexall for like decades, and they, you, I could just hear that voice forever on repeat in my brain. Um, and he was always pushing to sell tickets or buy your tickets to then resell, but he was a scalping legend in our city. So anytime that I, I got a nice little uh, memory of that, Tyler. So that's why I was laughing. I was thinking of Jerry Curl mullet guy selling tickets, which ties into the mullet arena. It's, it's a oh, beautiful yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, last final, final game tonight in Arizona for the Coyotes, and it comes against the Edmonton Oilers. It is a Sherwood Ford Giant Game Day edition of the show. Check them out online, SherwoodFord.ca. Their extensive inventory of new and used vehicles and when you use sherwood ford as your next dealership you get access to all the perks and we're not just talking sure bucks liam we're talking about the mobile service van and the over 50 bays they have to take care of your vehicle yes jay uh i am currently using sherwood ford's valet service they came and met me at the office before i started my day took the bronco in it's getting an oil change and it should be back within the hour you know what i i noticed your vehicle wasn't here because i usually park right in front of you and I thought, oh, no, Jay's not in. And then I realized he's probably using the Sherwood Ford service. That's how there good they go. are. It's too easy. That is the good stuff. Uh, all right, we got a lot to get to on the show. Not only are we going to give you all the usual Sherwood Ford Giant game day stuff, we're going to have Frank Saravalli swing by in a little bit as well. He's going to give us the latest on what exactly is going on with the Arizona Coyotes because nothing has been settled yet. Nothing's been announced, I should say, so nothing is official. We're going to talk about everything that went down last night in the playoff race. Um, <laughs> Daki is in over on the Charm Diamond Center's YouTube check or YouTube chat, he says, Jay, contact check today. Can he see us? Jay, the chat does love talking shit about you when you don't have your contacts in. So they want to know if if you can actually read today. Well, I don't know if this is good content, Tyler, but I've got my contacts in my pocket, and I can put them in right now live on air or not. I, what do you I think I'll, I'll let the chat decide. Here are my contacts right here. If you want me to put them in live on air, I will. And then I can read the chat because I don't know if anyone was commenting about mullet guy. There was a couple of people support there. Anyone remember that guy? There was a few people that said they remembered him. Uh, Mr. Burns said, I forgot about him. So there's one person who clearly remembered. And then Reagan said, legend. So I would assume. Tickets. Like it's like a piercing voice. You could hear it. You get off the LRT and you'd like, you like, you, because you'd get off and you'd walk right. underneath and come back. And right as you're coming up the stairs, you could hear that guy. <laughs> I just remember the guy with the, uh, the drums. Oh. Yeah, right in front of the the LRT there. That was a staple. A lot of people are saying put him in, Jay. Put him in. Right. Bry said put him in. Canadian Connor said put him in. Very easy to do. Bring Cassian hey. home. Put him in, Jay. Shout Tyler. out to Connor. Um, yeah, put him in. That's fine. Uh, I want to take this. I'm going to go a personal angle for today's Sherwood Ford Giant Game Day uh, question, and it is from Sasky Oiler fan Tyler. Yotes fans are begging for Oilers fans to not rep tonight. What are you going to do? Um, I know we talked about this a little bit before, but I do. Do I go white Oilers jersey or do I just go white T-shirt to the game and just blend in with the crowd? Rock like an Oilers hat, but like nothing more than that. I think a white Oilers jersey is respectful enough. Like you got to support your team. Uh, I, I think maybe like we don't have to take over the stadium by the getting let's go Oilers chance going, you know, from puck drop to final whistle. Mm -hmm. But I think wearing a white Oilers jersey is a nice compromise. 
Is that a memo going around? I have not seen that. That is it. Yeah, it was a thing on like uh, there were some Coyotes fans on Reddit and Twitter like uh, putting out like, "Hey, if you're coming, please wear white. We want to be able to like do the white out in our final game." Blah blah blah. So there's gonna be a ton of Oilers fans there, and I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of people rocking Oilers jerseys like blue ones. So it's not like I'll stand out. I just don't want to put myself in a spot where I look like a jerk. And there's Coyotes fans being like, "Hey man, fuck you! Like, why are you doing this in our final I, game?" I, 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 think moment. Choice, I think if your choice yeah. is a blue Oilers jersey and that was the only jersey or a white tee, then I would say white tee. But uh, I think a white Oilers jersey fits. It, it'll it'll give the aesthetic and serve the intention of what you know Coyotes fans are trying to have tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, good news has go is, shirtless. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did say streak. He did. So maybe that's less disrespectful than I thought. Maybe just that Wait. pale skin is the, <laughs> the, the real white of the whiteout. They would definitely never come back if you did that. <laughs> just by the white jersey. Yeah. Okay. That, there you go. We've solved it. I'm going to trust the chat. I will rock the white jersey. Calvin Pickard is in the chat. He says, good day, gents. And he is going or is, is expected to be between the pipes for the Edmonton Oilers this evening. Uh, let me hit you guys with another question. Would you go Pickard back to back here? Do you Would you have any concern about Stuart Skinner potentially going a week within starts heading into the playoffs? Do you not want to risk injury? What would you guys do? I don't know which one he wants to go first. You go Pickard for both and just roll them out there. Or are you giving Stu one of these? I well, I liked what you said the other day, Tyler. How it made it seem like Skinner didn't need to play another game after the way he played against San Jose. It was very relaxed for him. So I think you're good, probably rolling picking in both, right? Like I, I would torn. I'm I wouldn't really care torn on this. It. It's not. It's just about keeping the body moving at a game pace for me. Yeah. Like, man, maybe give. I, I think Skinner should start tonight, or and I know it's probably disrespect respectful to play half the game tonight. Right. I know that's like a preseason move to swap goalies, so maybe that's disrespectful to the Coyotes in their final game. But I, I just it's good. Like movement is so key, mm-hmm. uh, and I know they practice, but still, movement at a game pace is much different. So, I, I would like to see Skinner get some game time in the next two days. I, yeah, I thought um, about the half game thing too. Like, I wonder if tonight would have been a better place to start him. I think so, but well, you have I, well, Pickard playing his Well, no, team. actually, I'll, I'll tell you why not when we get to the betting segment, why he shouldn't start tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, uh, Pickard should right. start tonight. Yeah, sure. I think he's probably yes. going to. Mark M, Pickard tonight, oh. Campbell tomorrow. Liam, there's no way for them to make that work cap space-wise, though, right? No, they're not with definitely not with Campbell. For they, one day, we, we don't have one day of cap room for Jack oh. Campbell. They might, if they sent down Holloway, maybe they would because his cap is dead, right? So he's like 3.3 million of dead cap. They had 1.4 until Holloway came up. So it'd be pretty close. They got to be able to afford one day. Yeah, they might be able to do one. Mm-hmm. Cause he's at one, um, one, 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 two, five. That's what they can bury. Um, like that's the exposure, right? Yes. I think it's one, two, five, one, one, whatever. I'm going to try and look. There was another comment in here. I know Christopher Palmer made this a couple of times and it was like, Hey, how can you really decide what you want to do with the goalies when you don't know what the playoff schedule is? And D Doug is in and says, I've heard we might not play till Tuesday. There's no way they're going to make the Oilers wait until Tuesday when the rest of the playoffs are starting Saturday. I I think it's Sunday or Monday. Why are you hearing Tuesday? What's feeling Tuesday? Like if it's not Sunday, I'll be pissed, but it's, I think it's going to be Monday. <sighs> really? The Oilers, the Oilers want it to I be Monday. I got so much goddamn work I need to do then. <laughs> and you think if it's Sunday, it could be a day game Sunday as well. So that kind of affects it too, I've read. So it is Monday. Damn it. Okay. I got some work to do. I, Maybe we'll, we'll ask Frank. Maybe Frank's got insider info. I, I texted Frank this morning and he's like, well, it's only 6 a.m. in Tempe. So it'd be too early to poke them. <laughs> I, I think it's Monday because they've played five in the last seven days. But also the reason they have yeah, had to do this schedule at the end is because they took that week off, a weekend off for uh, McDavid's walk of fame. Getting in 13 years after the weekend. <laughs> Who's now getting, he he's getting his. Yet. He was in the walk of fame. <laughs> yeah. 
he's getting his star removed because of his beef with Drake. Now they're retroactively going back and pulling it up. So the weekend's going to be no more. Um, all right, let's keep continuing along and get to the lineup report. It's brought to you by service credit union. This is the final month of the service big share contest. You don't want to miss your chance to win $1 million. Every $500 you save with service gets you five entries into the service big share contest contest ends April 30th, 2024 skill test required for rules. Visit service.ca slash win another change that's likely coming to the Oilers blue line is that Philip Broberg is going to make his way into the lineup he was officially recalled he has been ripping it up in the American League as Bob points out in his uh, post here 35 points in 48 games averaging 23 to 26 minutes a game with the Condors Bob says, don't be surprised if he plays against both Arizona and Colorado. I wouldn't be surprised if Troy Stetcher gets in any or as well. How would you guys handle the whole resting on the blue line thing? Would you just pick pairings? Like, do you sit Ekholm and Bouchard tomorrow and tonight you just sit Nurse and CeCe and you roll Broberg and Stetcher out there? Or do you want to give someone like Stetcher games with Darnell Nurse to get comfortable in case that's the spot you eventually need him? Or games with Brett Kulak in case that's the spot you eventually need him? How would you guys handle resting the blue line? Um, well, I think that's a good way to do it. I could see them doing that, but I'm just looking like CC and CC has been banged up. Like he's missed practices, right? He's missed a game. I wouldn't be shocked if he's the one that comes out the line. I would play Stetcher and Brobook in both games. However you want to do it. And I wouldn't really worry about being like, well, what if this needs to happen? Like if that needs to happen, then it's just going to happen anyway. Right. Whether you like it or not. So I would tonight, I would take out nurse and CC. And then tomorrow I would take out Bouchard and Echo. And then Kulak and Vinny just play. I think whoever okay. is dinged up, you take out. I don't care. I don't care if you have a paper cut. Whoever needs any kind of time to heal something, that like just take them out. We got two players in to mm -hmm. kind of give themselves a chance to showcase where they're at. Uh, and yeah, I don't think, to me, I wouldn't put any kind of method to the madness. It's just whoever needs the maintenance time, you give it to them, and they take their spot. I like this one from Christopher Palmer. It's like coaching is key. He's got to know how the decor is feeling 100% on that. Saski says, I do not like Stetcher Nurse. Prefer Kulak Stetcher. Yeah, I mean, whatever you want to end up doing. I, I do kind of trust that Chris Knobloch's going to have a good pulse like, on, uh, on this thing. Nothing games, so who cares? Well, and, and that's the other side of it, too. Like, we're going to see Holloway probably get in for the final two as well. But, like... Again, I think Holloway's been playing unbelievably over the last little bit. I think he deserves to be in the night one playoff lineup. I don't think they're going to go that way. So, like, what are you guys even watching for in these final two games of the season? Like, is there anyone who you think can work their way in or out of the lineup in these two games? Or do you think Chris Knobloch's basically just going to set his lineup, roll four lines, and then close his eyes and be like, whatever, these don't matter? Well, it's probably more about plays say milestones and bonuses, I think, these last two games and what's going to be determined on night one of the playoffs, right? Like, Fogel needs one to get 20. Uh, Hyman would be 55 goals, I think he would be at, something like that. So I don't know what the bonuses would be, but I bet I think, those yeah, are the, the guys money, that the go money out. Bonuses, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that could be it. That's what the players would want. Yeah, and like... These games based the only thing they would be playing for is seeding in the Western Conference overall, which wouldn't matter until the Western Conference finals, anyway. So it's like a minor detail. Yeah. And even for the bonuses, it's not like these guys are ca chasing cash with these, right? It's like just for pride, more or less. Like, well, I mean, we don't know exactly. that. Is there, is there any, like, does a, is there anyone have any perform? I guess it would only be like a Holloway type or a. So the only players with performance bonuses, uh, Holloway. Holloway brown and perry perry what does perry yeah. have it was like 10 games he hit uh, it I think brown and perry had like just hit 10 games i don't know what holloway okay, then, yeah then yeah i guess it's yeah to, to hit just certain milestones but also yeah. it may not be for a bonus today but it's for a contract tomorrow yes yeah and and that's fair as why well. i especially think for a guy like warren fogel for him to be able to go into free agency if he gets that 20th goal and be like i scored 20 goals all at even strength like i think that's pretty significant they've all been at even strength yeah, he hasn't scored on the power play, right? I don't know. You you just told you just told me they hadn't. Short handed. He has one short handed, I'm assuming. Like um, has two. I think sorry, he does. Sorry, he has one one power play, one short handed goal. So 17 of them have been at even strength. That is very impressive. 19 would have been more impressive, though. 
19 would have been a little more impressive. That's fair. Um, but I think the lineup, Aaron, if you want to flash up what the forward line could be, lines could potentially look like for tonight, they didn't skate today in Arizona. So no optional for the Oilers. Um, I, what do you guys think of McDavid and Henrique the other day? Liam, I know we kind of broke this down on After Dark during our very unhinged episode late at night. Um, but I actually kind of thought Henrique worked well with, with Connor McDavid. I'm interested to see if, if Knobloch's going to be willing to stick with that heading into the playoffs. What did you think? I, I liked it. I did too. Well, I think it's good for face offs. It's good for, it's, it's definitely good for face offs. Uh, Henrique's got like high end, like, Lower high end skill, right? Yeah. Like high end, I don't want to lump him with McDavid, but like I guess that would be elite. But he's got high end skill. Those two can play well together. And the fact that you can get nuge with dry, like that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Uh, because once again, that 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 just pushes and makes your third line or fourth line just brings that depth down. And like going to the playoffs, that's so important. Like it is okay if Evander Kane is on your third line. Totally. Like, if he's buying into that, like that's a good thing because he can score. Mm -hmm. He is physical. Uh, he can wear down the team, uh, the the opposing team. So that's a it's a good thing. So I like that they're kind of seeing if there's uh, something there and, and and keeping it on with the with with the lineup tonight. So it's something to keep an eye on. But I'm 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 keen on it for sure. I was saying it was good for like when for the face offs, like you can have him retake them. And then McDavid's just in the open play immediately. He's not yes. wrapped up in a dot. Yeah, I think that was a really smart observation you made, Liam. Like, just giving them that little bit of flexibility off the face off to throw different looks at the other team. Like, again, when the other team's lining up, one of those defensemen is sitting there going, okay, I got to keep an eye on 97 coming out of the face-off dot. You throw them on the wing, that's that's just a totally different thing you're forcing them to have to deal with. And someone in the chat said... Uh, you know, Henrique's very similar to Nuge and they work well together. I do think that's one of the big upsides. And we talked about this even when he was acquired. One of the big upsides in getting a guy like Henrique is he spent a lot of time in Anaheim on the wing. He spent a lot of time in Anaheim down the middle. He's just a really, really flexible piece that gives you a ton of different looks in this lineup. The other name that's coming up a lot in our chat right now is Evander Kane. We obviously don't know if he's going to be in the lineup tonight because the Oilers didn't skate. Um, if you flash up the lines again, Aaron, just to give me the vision. Uh, I like the look of this top nine like a lot. You obviously need to get Evander Kane into the top nine. Is there any combination that you think makes sense on the fourth line with Dylan Holloway involved? Or is Holloway going to be in this weird case where like he's the 13th forward who gets thrown into the top nine if there's an injury? And the only way he can make an impact is, is if he's in the top nine. I know Gregor's made that point on his show when I was doing my hits with him that like if he's on the fourth line, he doesn't kill penalties and he won't get enough minutes. And, and I get that side of it. But I also just look at the way he's moving as of late and it's like, Man, I, I have a hard time saying he wouldn't be impactful, even if it was only, you know, 10 five on five minutes on the fourth line every game. Yeah, I'm I'm growing more onto the side of like he can play on the fourth line. I would just take Yamamoto. If you're rolling the fourth line. Yeah. And I, I the reason I think that too is because Carrick and, and yeah, Mark too, but like Carrick and Brown work so hard as well as Holloway that I think they'd be able to create create chances. And we've seen it a few times this year where they've done whatever and then just get the puck to the point and then just crash the net and there's a couple of tip goals right like it just has to be simple hockey and like holloway's not doing anything crazy when he's playing he is kind of just going to the net and scoring goals right so he's playing a playoff style right now so you probably can just play him and the penalty kill is going to be the big decider for it unfortunately and it's not going to go in holloway's favor but maybe he's just going to make him make a decision that he has to be in the lineup he's played better than yeah mark i agree 100 percent um, I, you know, someone it was X Rod who said, "What if he goes with the two third lines mentality and plays Holloway as a third liner that way?" And I, I do think there's maybe an interesting way to do that. Like if you like the duo of Holloway and Perry, you know, maybe your fourth line is Holloway, Carrick, and Perry, and then your third line is like Brown, McLeod, and Kane. Is that spreading it out to the point where you add more depth, or is that spreading out your truly impactful pieces too thin? Like, is that just maybe trying to tinker a little bit too hard? I like having Perry and Kane together. I was mm -hmm. like that duo because I think Perry is just going to hold Kane accountable and it's going to force Kane to play a little bit better. So I would. Or keep, he checks out. Or he checks. Yeah. Or and then it goes. You, and honestly, there's no in between. It's one of two ways. And then maybe you just scratch him and then at least you have Holloway that can go in. Right. So 
I mean, if you're at the playoffs, like it doesn't matter at that point. If Kane's not yeah. buying in, then maybe that's what you have to do. I hope he will. So then I would go keep Brown in the fourth line. Honestly, okay. Who of those wingers that we're seeing right now uh, in the bottom six can play center? Carrick. Uh, Just the Hall- wingers. Holloway. Yamaha yeah, has played center this year. I would honestly, for the, I would put Holloway at center for the next two games because we know McLeod is allergic to the middle of the ice and he's probably a better winger than a center. Like I'd like to see what we have with Holloway at the center position because if he could solidify a third line, fourth line center position, well, then the debate about where you put him goes away and then we're just slotting in, you know, wingers that are playing to the standard that we need for playoffs. Yeah, um, someone like, said I wouldn't. Like I'm, I'm, I'm worried about McLeod going to the playoffs. To be honest, McLeod. Yeah, it's the 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 rink shrinks, um, and he's a perimeter guy, and he's your center. So like, there's just a lot of circumstances there that you know for me cause personal concern. Him letting him fly on the wing, removing the center ice responsibility, I think is probably setting him up for the most success possible for for this team and himself. It's kind of like a yeah, new I, I'm going to agree with Naeem in the chat and say, I think McLeod's been playing some of his best hockey right now. And I think part of it is you're putting him with two guys, whether it's Holloway or Kane on the left and then Perry on the right side, you're putting him with a couple of guys who just crash and bang. And that's all they do is go to those areas of the ice that Ryan McLeod doesn't go to. Um, Daki also says McLeod is complimentary speed to cover Perry a little bit. And I think I agree with that take as well. The only problem with, you know, and I saw Sergeant Battle, a couple of other people said, why don't you experiment with Holloway, Kane, and Perry? And Jay, you talked about moving McLeod back to the wing. If you were to go McLeod, Perry, and Kane, where are you, or sorry, uh, Holloway, Kane, and Perry, where are you putting McLeod, right? Because like you're not putting Warren Fogle on the fourth line. You're not putting Nudra Henrique on the fourth line. So are you going to put Ryan McLeod as a fourth line winger for you now? I, I don't think that's putting no, him. Now let's put on our two third line hats, right? If you're rolling... We have to roll our bottom six. We have to. Mm-hmm. So we need to set them up so you can. They can't play seven minutes a night. They need to be 10 to 12 minutes. Like, they need to. Yeah. There's, there, was, uh, service. That bottom six is to try to chip in the odd uh, greasy goal here and there, but it is to keep the puck in their end or hit any, anyone that has the, on the opposing team that has the puck. That is their mission, is just to – Take pucks, like keep keep possession away from the from the other team, or to hit guys like crazy, and to buy time and and energy for the f- top six. I yeah, I completely agree. They have to have a positive contribution. Yeah, and they just chip in the odd goal, and like that, like that, and that's why I like about Carrick. Carrick's one of those guys that can chip in a little offense. Mm-hmm. McLeod can too. Holloway's proven that he can. Obviously, Perry, like you got some smart and and talented guys in that bottom six. And if Kane is also there and he buys into it, like all of a sudden now, like our bottom six is really good. And this is this is all because Adam Henry can be moved into that top line. Yeah, like that's the power. Like, you know, when you make moves like that, if it pushes guys down and really establishes some depth in your bottom six, it gives you some good options. He has really been such a great ad, not just from what he does on the ice, but like just his ability, like you said, to play anywhere. Yeah. And he just, you're able to spread out your offense a little bit more and have this depth. And I know people have been like frustrated with him for whatever reason. He has five goals since the deadline. Like, He's having a really good season and just a really good time with Edmonton too. So I like what he's been able to bring to the lineup and he's well worth the value you got him for him and Carrick. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Sergeant battle through his suggested lines in the chat here. Henrik McDavid, Hyman, Nuge, Dry, Fogel, and then Kane, Holloway, Perry, McLeod, Carrick, Brown, Yanmark. I think if you're going to do the McLeod lower down one, I think he's playing as as a center in this situation. And you're probably keeping both Brown and Yanmark in the lineup. Carrick's also um, maybe i know i, like I think one I thing with holloway playing third line center is at least mcleod has two playoffs in his back pocket now of playing as a third line center and i think that's beneficial rather and, than throwing like holloway into the mix you know what and, I mean? and mcleod good defensively remember against vegas there was a little bit of a stretch there where mcleod was putting up good numbers against elites and then they just went away from it for whatever reason well, I'm not. I'm not saying to scratch McLeod. Oh I'm no, saying trying to set I know, him I know. success. And, and yeah. Holloway's also pushing the issue. Like, all, like if as long as Holloway, uh, you know, 
and, 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 and he's shown in the last few games and granted it's regular season, like removes the liability side of his game. Like mm-hmm. he's an ideal playoff player. Speed, he check, like he hits. Yeah. Right? Like he brings those out and, and you know, he's proving that he's willing to go to the net. He's willing to get into the dirty areas to try and score those playoff goals. Like you don't get that from Ryan McLeod. Yeah. So like yep. Holloway is really making a case because as, as long as that liability factor is there, and I'm not saying it's there, but this is ultimately why that trust isn't there because he doesn't have the two playoff runs. You know, mm-hmm. he doesn't understand the playoff game totally. But like if, if that can be mitigated or addressed or he can prove he doesn't have that side of the game and he's just making those smart, simple plays, he's more of a factor. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. I've got light breaking news. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. Calvin Pickard in the starters net. There you go. Boom. You're making history, buddy. The we last goalie to start against the Arizona Coyotes. <laughs> who would have thought? I want to get to this one from D. Doug, who says we also need the bottom six to score. That's why we didn't win against Vegas last year. I looked at the game log from the game the Oilers got eliminated against Vegas last year. Clem Costin played three minutes. You can't have guys who are only playing three minutes. So a little bit of that is on coaching, but like, giddy up they need a bottom six that can contribute and i do think ken holland's done a better job this year of building a bottom six that can actually help you in the playoffs like Corey perry is going to be a massive difference maker huge yeah yeah i i agree i the the frustrating part about that too from woodcroft doing that to guys like clem and he did it to Vinny as well in the first round is when you look at that king series the reason they won game six is because yamamoto and costin scored they were both playing on the fourth line yeah. so you have to trust these guys in moments and that's going to be a test for Knobloch too. But like you said, like Holland has done a really good job of, of building a depth team. Like I, it's crazy. We have not gone into a playoffs where we've been like, we have 13 forwards who can play. Mm-hmm. Like we're talking about healthy scratching someone who probably deserves to be in the 12, whoever it may be. Right. It's, it's a great problem to have. And it's going to create such good competition and push guys to, to their limits of what they're able to produce. I think it, Go ahead. Sorry, yeah, just to jump in on this. I think we're like Corey Perry is going to be a beast, beast in the playoffs, but I really think he is going to, it's going to be the um, like untangibles that he's going to bring. Like, I think he's the one to help nurture a Holloway to elevate to a playoff game. Mm-hmm. And like, that is the power of Perry. Like, we know he's not the most vocal guy, but I, you know, he would probably want to spend time with, with Holloway and kind of, bring and share some of that knowledge and wisdom on how we should be. Cause I, you know, Perry would probably identify him as someone that we need. It's like, that's the power of bringing in like that, that strong veteran presence. That's got a lot of those reps in, in, in playoff reps in, cause they can share that knowledge and, and uh, with, with the, with the younger guys that are trying to cut their teeth in the league. So I just want to draw some attention to that. Well, even a guy like Henrique too, yep. for, for Holloway, when Henrique made it to the Stanley cup finals, the last time he made the playoffs, he was a rookie. Yeah. So now you have Henry. Why is it Henry Perry and Ekholm who have all been to the Cup final? I think so. He would have been nurtured all along during a, a, yeah. as a rookie uh, in, in a in a playoff push. So now so. he knows you know how the veterans treated him, and he's also got a job. Mm-hmm. And that's why these these veterans like that's like that's like the secondary um, duty that they have to this roster. Yeah, and Mark's been to the Cup final. Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should help you scratch him though. <laughs> Okay, a couple of comments I want to get to. Daryl Sutter said, Oilers do not win if Costin played more. And that wasn't the point I was trying to make. The point I was trying to make was they had guys in the bottom six doing nothing who were not playing and were not contributing. And and you can't have that if you want to go on a deep playoff run. Sean is in and says Hyman, Kane, and Nuge didn't contribute much against Vegas. I mean, no one outside 29 and 97 contributed much against Vegas. I also do think, Jay, you talked about how Perry can be a guy who kind of shows a, a player like Dylan Holloway what it's like to be in the fight and be a playoff guy. I think we saw a bit of that rub off when it was Kane Perry and Ryan McLeod for those games. I think that was the best we saw out of Ryan McLeod. And I don't wonder if maybe Perry and Kane being next to him on the bench every shift, talking about things. You know, McLeod's going out there and watching these two guys hopefully bang and crash and be pests and getting guys' faces. I think that could rub off in a really positive way on someone like Ryan McLeod. Maybe it gets him into the fight more. Well, well, what they also do is they give him a little bit more space, right? Um, mm-hmm. and with his speed, that gives him a chance to, to, you know, perform a little bit better. Uh, so, you know, there, I, 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 I think that statement is, is completely fair. I think, you know, that is a decent line. And if McLeod's to stay in the middle, like, I think that's, you know, they having those two guys on their wing, like they could be very productive. 
Yeah, uh, we're going to be joined by Frank Saravalli in a little bit here on the show, but let's continue along with the program and get to some game notes. They're brought to you by our friends at Liam, whose game notes brought to you by today. Is it Douglas Mattress? It is Douglas Mattress. You see, Liam, I'm foggy brained because I'm in a hotel and I haven't been sleeping on my Douglas. I'm not feeling as well rested. But if you head to Douglas.ca slash Oilers Nation, you can pick yourself up a Douglas mattress today. These are handcrafted in Canada. It ensures the highest quality materials and fastest delivery to you. And another great part, they're a locally owned and operated Edmonton company. And the hits just keep coming because right now when you order a mattress, you get a free comfort sleep bundle. That's two memory foam pillows with pillow protectors, one luxurious cotton sheet set, and one mattress protector free with any mattress order. Head to douglas.ca slash Oilers Nation and check it out. Uh, Liam, you mentioned Zach Hyman closing in on the 55 goal club, and that gives him a chance to join some elite company. Uh, you had written down, I think, who else he, who else in Oilers history has done 55 goals in a season? Yeah, so Yari Curry twice, Connor McDavid once, and Drysaddle once. Anyone want to guess how many Wayne had? I saw it in the sheet, so I won't say uh with edmonton yeah he had eight six god damn it so there, there you go. go uh warren fogel looking to finish off a 20 goal season as well we obviously talked this game means absolutely nothing for the oilers they are locked into second place in the division the coyotes playing for a lot of pride tonight and they have been playing some somewhat decent hockey as of late since march 1st they are above 500 at 12 and 10 and they've been one of the highest scoring teams in the league in that stretch 3.68 goals for premium ranks NHL since the start of March, but the downside for the and we talked about this last time the Oilers played against them. It's all about keeping pucks out of their net. Carol Vamelka was very good at that game in that game in Rogers Place, but that has been a bit of an anomaly. 3.45 goals against per game is the ninth eighth most in the NHL since the beginning of March. So the Coyotes, they've been struggling to keep pucks out of their net. They have been scoring a lot, though. Another area where they have struggled is on the PK. March 1st, they have the second worst penalty kill in the NHL. That actually might be one of the reasons why I don't sit an Ekholm Bouchard pairing tonight. I think I want Bouchard and all of Power Play One in the lineup tonight. Going up against a bad PK, one chance before the playoffs to iron out some kinks and, and really get some confidence going. Is that maybe something I'm just overthinking? Like, would you guys sit McDavid tonight, dry settle tomorrow, or some variation of sitting like a couple of big name forwards tonight and a couple tomorrow? Or would you play them all tonight and then sit like a whole whack load tomorrow and maybe try some emergency recalls? I don't think they'll sit dry saddle. I don't know. I just have that feeling he's going to be like, I'm not sitting. And he'll just play sure. both games. I think McDavid will miss one of them. Um, I think it was OJ Gaze put in the chat before that Evander Kane is not on the ice for morning skate. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't seen anything pop up yet. The Oilers are on the ice, so they are skating. I forgot with the time zones. They would be skating a little bit later than uh, than usual. So we'll keep you posted if anything comes down in that regard. Um, <laughs> Troy is in. It says, let's spam kid line in the chat so Tyler will speak to it. Who would be the kid line that the Oilers could even put together? Like, are you talking Holloway and McLeod together? Who's the third kid that you could do that? I don't know. I don't call get him it. McLeod. Yeah, yeah they call, call him Law. That'd be silly. Um, Robert plays also, I want to get <laughs> want to get to this. JBD, we've had a Douglas for nine months. My sister in law stayed at my house a couple weeks ago. She liked it very much. So there you go. Shout out to Douglas Mattresses. Another thing I want to talk about that has had me feeling good over the last couple of months. And Jay, I know you're going to be able to speak to this as well, but it is AG1. Since starting drinking AG1, I have felt numerous benefits to this thing. Stress management, immune support, those aren't things you typically think that you could get help from in the form of a drink, but you absolutely get that with AG1. I used to be a multivitamin guy. I switched to AG1 because of a bunch of reasons. Again, vitamin C, zinc to support my immune health. Jay, you're an AG1 guy. I, I, I'd love to say I'm a day one AG1-er. I'm pretty close to day one. I've been uh, I've been on the green stuff for probably <laughs> five years now. And honestly, I take it every morning. Well, I try to take it every morning. Mm -hmm. I'm probably five to six times a week uh, type guy. And uh, the thing I notice uh, the most about it is like the things that you pointed out, but just also just in my day to day, it kind of helps with my focus a little bit. And so it's it's all good stuff that's in it, but it's made with real stuff. So that's why I've always been. That's why I'm a day one D1 AG1 guy. 
I yeah. actually went to go like I drink it quite often too. Good. And the other day, I went to go uh, go and make one in the morning when I got up, and my girlfriend stole it. She took it from me. She took the the bottle Jay and I spoke about the other week, which is fantastic. I was like, "Where is it?" She was like, "Oh, I wanted one today." So she took it from me. Well, Crawford took it. Fr- I <laughs> left it on the table. I was I had a half drink, so I had to go grab her toast out of the toaster, and she grabbed. And she was sipping on it, <laughs> and she liked it. Like like so like just to tell with the flavor, like it, it's got all that stuff in it. But like Crawford liked the taste. She wanted more, and I'm like, she was dialed in. I, I, I don't know if you're ready for all this nutrient <laughs> explosion yet, yeah. little one. Plenty of benefits, increases your energy, supports your gut health, helps keep your stress levels manageable, and it gives your body the nutrients it craves. We got a comment in here from Sam Squatch who says, Tyler, is there a promo code with AG1? Well, I love recommending AG1, and that's why I'm excited that they are a partner of the show. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs. I brought mine with me on vacation to Arizona. You get it with your first purchase, Sam Squatch, when you go to drinkag1.com slash Oilers Nation. That is drinkag1.com slash Oilers Nation. Excited to have AG1 on board as a partner. Uh, again, we are going to get to Frank Saravalli in a little bit here on the show very, very quickly. Let's go around the NHL for our friends at Duragard because last night was a wild one in the NHL playoffs. You had the Red Wings thinking they've saved their season. David Perron with three seconds to go. It was actually the second night in a row or second game in a row for the Red Wings where they saved their season in like the final 90 seconds of the game. Um, it was absolutely unreal, but Detroit ends up coming up short because the Washington Capitals win. And a part of it was it was tied late in that game and Philly pulls their goalie because Philly thinks they still need a regulation win to keep their season alive. They don't know that Detroit has tied the game and has already eliminated them. It was bananas last night in the NHL. I don't really get it. Okay. So, so if Philly lost, like, sorry, Detroit run one, Philly were just done. Right? Philly, well, Detroit gets a point or wins, Philly's done. Yeah. Okay. But Philly, so, so Philly has to go on the assumption, their only assumption that they're going to lose. They so they to have win. to win in regulation at all costs. So did them pulling the goalie screw Detroit? Or did it not really matter? Well, I guess because they, why, why don't they just try to win in overtime and pull a goalie then? Uh, why risk it in regulation? Because know. look, so heading into last night, Washington was at 89 and Philly was at 87. Watch the Philly point. in their last game, they had to tie them so they couldn't let Washington get a point, which is why they pulled their goalie. I think it's so lame that Washington made the playoffs. <laughs> like the what do you tra- mean? 40, 31, and 11. That is an okay <laughs> record. Minus goal differential, minus 112. Like Detroit, just watching those last two games. So many exciting players like Lucas Raymond, obviously Showtime, Patrick Kane. That would have been way better. And now we get like Ovechkin's well, in. Like, do that's better. Cool. I agree. Do better. Do way better. All those teams are not deserving of being in there, but one of them had to make it. And I wish it was Detroit. I like, it'll Washington, it'll never happen. Like I think the Islanders are good, but they're pretty boring. The know? Islanders lost more games than they this year how are they getting a divisional spot in the playoffs like there has never been a year where it is more clear cut and obvious that the nhl needs to make a change with their point system straight up like if you were to bet the islanders on the money line this year they went 38 and 43 that is that doesn't make sense how is this team in a divisional playoff spot just pardon what format would you suggest the three two one three points for regulation win i I know i know you got time because you're on vacation reformat the eastern conference on the three two one system and see where everyone slots in so tonight would be game 82 islanders and pittsburgh would be tied for the final playoff spot it would create a win and you're in game 82 tonight you've already done this (laughs) you just you already do it i saw it on twitter (sighs) all right undefeated do your own research do your own research guys um anyways i just think that it's, it's kind of a joke that the islanders get in with 38 wins and the capitals are under 500 as well they're 40 and 42 straight up this season how does that even happen how do you make the playoff the red wings are gonna they finished the year 500 they should have gotten in they should have gotten in over the capitals do you know what's funny is 
people always like to complain about the divisions and how we should go back to like one through eight. The playoffs would be exactly the same if they went one through eight in the Eastern Conference. Damn. Yeah. Kind of, the, the West would be a lot different. Like it would be Dallas, LA, if ended today. Vancouver. Well, it is going to be Dallas, LA. That's right. Damn, Van- LA. Vancouver, Vegas, Winnipeg, Nashville, Oilers, Colorado. Oh, geez. Do we not think, like, like <laughs> I don't fear Colorado. Do we not think though. Vancouver's in trouble here a little bit? Why? Because they play Nashville? Yeah. Like, how, what's I think their... Nashville's really good. I, I know. Like, yeah. So Vancouver's in trouble. Yeah. I, I think they might get eliminated round one. I think I series will go seven. Tyler, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I, I would put money on that series to go seven. I think it'll be really tight. The reason I think Vancouver should be scared of the Nashville Predators is because what's Van, one of Vancouver's biggest strengths is goaltending, and it's kind of negated in this matchup when you go Demko for Soros. And I guess you could maybe say the same thing about Nashville, right? Like Soros is their biggest strength, and it's negated by Demko on the other side. But I just think it's going to be a really kind of low-scoring series, and that, when it's low-scoring, the randomness factor shoots up a ton. Hitting one goal post could be the difference between you going up 3-1 at one point or the series being 2-2, you know? Yeah, if I had to make predictions today, because these are basically going to stay the same, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless Nashville or unless Vegas and LA get flipped, right? Because if LA wins, they would right. move up to 99 points. If Vegas wins, they're at 100. So there actually is a chance LA and Nashville end up flipping, and LA yep. has to end up going to Vancouver. I think, I think uh, Nashville has the tiebreaker. Yeah, they it? do. They have the. So the it's head-to-head. like that that Nashville Vancouver series is locked. Yeah, yeah sorry, they have regulation wins. If I, okay, right. if I had to make a prediction right now, which I do because I just told myself I have to. Can we bring up the standings again, Aaron? Sorry. I'm going to say, so Dallas will beat uh, LA. I think Winnipeg will go through. I think Winnipeg beats Colorado. Yep. I do think Vancouver will win that series, but I think it'll be a lot tighter than people say, and I'll say, obviously, Edmonton win. So Vancouver, Edmonton next round, and Dallas, Winnipeg, which is a really easy cop-out because they're the top two teams in both divisions. (laughs) <laughs> We're going to continue this conversation when we get our guy Frank Saravalli on the show. He's just a couple of minutes away. Uh, again, that was your look around the NHL brought to you by Duragard Fence Limited. If you're looking for a trusted professional fence company in Alberta that can do it all, count on Duragard Fence Limited. For 37 years, they've been offering manufacturing, installing, and repair services, as well as a whole range of do-it-yourself options. They're your one-stop shop, and it's been that way for over 37 years. Head to DuragardFence.ca. Since we have a couple of minutes and we're waiting for Frank, do we want to do the Betway Game Day Betting Challenge right now? Hmm? Sure. Hmm? Sure. Ah. I can't I see it on TV, but I remember what I bet. I went plus 650 for my bet against the Sharks, and I nailed it. The only downside for me personally is that we all nailed it. So uh, this thing's getting interesting going into Game 81, Liam. Can we flash up the, the results here? Yes. I, I need to see them. <laughs> Tyler, we don't have a screen. You have to tell us. Um, over six and a half. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, what are the yeah, units right where, now? Where are the units at right now? Okay. Uh, we got Liam at plus 7.08. I am now plus 1.54. Jay is minus 3.5. So, uh, Jay needs a couple of big days here, or maybe just a big day tonight to finish above or in the plus units on this one. And Jay, you are going, and the chat's already calling you out for it hard. Jay, you're betting on the Yotes to win. Guys, how could you come at me for this? This is the Arizona Coyotes' last game of existence. Yeah. You don't think these guys are going to put on for the fans and the market that supported them for decades? This is a nothing burger game for Edmonton. Nothing burger. I I think if it's one game, it's there's hockey game gods, Edmonton. there's juju. Like, man, like. You kind of want the Coyotes to win. You kind of- <laughs> it's the only time I will ever bet against the oil. Like the juju is all on the Coyotes side. So just let them have it and put your money there because you're probably going to win. So them over. So I, a lot of the goals make it entertaining over six and a half. It's five to one. That is juicy. They just got to win the game and go over six and a half. Like the juice is there. And I also think the juju is there. I am, uh, hey, not listen, I, 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 I don't win. hate your logic, yeah. but yeah, we guys all went with little base hits. Well, I, all I need is a base hit. Well, I know. I, <laughs> Tyler isn't swinging here. 
<laughs> well, I'll swing tomorrow. I'm thinking if I can hit this one, I'll end up three points something, and then it gives me like a manageable shot tomorrow to catch Liam in the season finale. <laughs> I can't. Be- I can't. Be- I can't believe all the hate I'm getting. You're getting a like, ton of hate, bloated, guys. This is not. This is not an anti Oilers take. <laughs> You're betting on them to lose, John Tay Porter. Come on. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh that was funny all right I like that, uh, was I that was great i didn't hear what he john k porter was that is that raptors basketball player that just got oh, oh, man. So anyways we'll move along we'll move along uh anyways there's the challenge it's brought to you by betway and right now you can get yourself a free bet up to 200 dollars if your first bet loses by betting with betway simply create a a new account by scanning the QR code that is on your screen right now and redeem your bonus. Place a bet with no minimum amount required. And if the bet loses, you will get a refund up to $200. You can then use that money to bet on your favorite sports. This offer only available outside of Ontario. The game day betting challenge. There you go. Uh, Jay, you do have some support. Mr. Burns, hashtag I stand it's with funny. Jay um, Maynard. He's not getting a ton of hate. He makes sense. You know, he makes sense, but he is getting a lot of hate. Um, lifetime ban from Oilers Nation every day for Jay. We can't have that heading into the playoffs. That's a reach. Yeah, that's a reach. All right, uh, let's wrap up the show by heading out to the Star Mechanical guest line, Edmonton. Yes, I agree. I'm with you. I didn't bet them. I'm cheering, I'm cheering for humanity here. I'm betting <laughs> on humanity. All right, Edmonton's number one plumbing and heating company. Check them out online at starmechanical.ca. You can trust your local star, residential, commercial. They do it all, and it's they've been doing it. For more than 20 years, Frank Saravalli, our daily face-off insider, joins the show. And Frank, it is expected to be the final game at Mullet Arena this evening. Final game for the Arizona Coyotes. But we haven't heard anything official from the league yet. Do you know when that could be happening? Uh, They're hoping that they can still announce it uh, Thursday or Friday of this week. I mean, obviously the cat's out of the bag. But to just get to a spot where they feel like everyone's comfortable enough and in agreement um, a sort of preliminary agreement, even if that is possible, that's part of the plan. But um, I just, I have to chime in here. I, first off, I am with Jay on daily face off live today. That was my play of the day is Yotes money line. But my big question is given the ground that Jay needs to make up, is this like final jeopardy? Like, is he, is he wagering? How many is he wagering? I guess, does it matter if you are 20 behind or whether you're winning? Like that would seem to matter. Uh, well, I'm I the, the juice is there. I'm putting a decent bet tonight just so I can get my account flush for playoffs where I can bet real crazy and silly. Oh, so it doesn't, it's not ending at game 82. Oh, it does. This is a regular season thing. Okay. Yes. We'll restart it in the playoffs. So I'm trying so you, to get you, I'm trying to play for second place because Liam's so far in advance. Mm-hmm. But if he doesn't hit and I hit with that and I hit another five to one, like I'm trying, I'm actually trying to go for it here. You're swinging. Makes sense to me. And I'm all, I mean, there's never a more scheduled win for the Arizona Coyotes in their, their tenure, their existence than tonight. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it's going to be a weird scene down at Mullet Arena. They're looking to do the whiteout and all of that stuff. Terrible, dude. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what it feels like. Again, like when the Oilers score, like I, there's still going to be a ton of Oilers fans. Like my flight down here was packed with Oilers fans. Even just like, again, walking around and went to Top Golf last night. There was a group from Edmonton there. Sorry, yesterday in the afternoon group from Edmonton there. So there's going to be a ton of Oilers fans. But I don't think the Oilers fans like, I think it puts a bit of a damper on it. If you're like watching the Oilers score, I don't think you like go nuts. Cause I don't know. I, I feel bad for the Coyotes fans who are going to be in attendance tonight. It's like, man, I they're losing their team. Like that sucks. There's legitimate diehards down here who are losing their team. Frank, it's a, it, as much as the relocation's exciting and all that, it is still a shitty situation. Oh, I mean, look, there's no doubt, but here's what the point that I've made. And I, I believe it. I think this is a win, win, win for everyone. It's a win for the NHL to get out from Alex Marowello. It's a win to get this team finally in the hands, this franchise in the hands of a, a, you know, a proper steward who can support this team in, yes, another win, one of the fastest growing markets in the U.S. Now, so how is this a win for Coyotes fans? My answer to that is when Arizona gets a team back in the near future, three years, five years, seven years, whatever it is, and the NHL has a proven track record of delivering a team back because think to Minnesota, 
The North Stars go to Dallas. Minnesota finally gets an arena built. Six years later, they have a team, and no one has ever questioned Minnesota's ability to host and uh, have an NHL team in their market. That's that's fact. So the win for Coyotes fans is when they finally get a new arena and probably with a different owner, my guess would be the next time around than Alex Maruello, even with this agreement that's in place. The win for Coyotes fans is stability. They haven't had any. It's been a toxic mess. It's been chaos for two decades. And I actually am a believer in the market. You're going to have to go for a, a few painful years here without a team. But the win is that when you get one, you're going to finally be able to compete on a level ice surface with everyone else in the NHL. And that's something that they haven't been able to do for a long, long time. Is there a, I saw a report the other day on Twitter, Frank, that Tucson might be moving to the mullet arena. Is that, is there any truth to that? Yeah, they're trying to work that out. Um, that's also part of this agreement, but Alex Maruello owns the Tucson Roadrunners franchise. So it would be his call to move them to Mullet Arena. Uh, and that might be one way for him to fulfill the lease that he has standing with Arizona State University and Mullet Arena. But that's one part that they're still working through. Sure. Uh, Bill Armstrong's future. Have we heard anything final about whether or not he's actually going there? Uh, we have not. Uh, there certainly have been, you know, lots of questions behind the scenes. Um, don't know who all is part of it just yet. All right. Um, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the playoff picture out east. Frank, it was a wild finish last night around the NHL. I know you guys broke it all down on Daily Faceoff Live. We know the eight teams, and perhaps more importantly, we know the teams who've now missed. Wings, the Penguins, and the Flyers. Which one of those three should be the most disappointed that they didn't get in? I'm sure fans in Detroit are feeling a certain way with their playoff drought extending. I'm sure uh, Pittsburgh Penguins fans are lamenting wasting this really impressive 36-year-old season from Sidney Crosby, one of the best in NHL history at that age. To me, I think the Flyers fans should be more disappointed than anyone because what happens to me this season was a real departure from plan. And a lot of it was in a good way for a long period of time. But to wake up today on locker cleanout day and your team held a playoff spot for like 75 games this year, you probably didn't ask all or turn over all of the stones and ask all of the questions that you needed to for a team that acknowledged before the season that they were rebuilding at the trade deadline. And then, so you missed the playoffs and then you wake up and you look at the draft lottery standings and you realize that you have a 0% chance to draft Macklin Celebrini. That that's the ultimate kick in the nuts season. It's just the definition of mid not bad enough to, to be in the draft lottery and have a real shot and get a real promising player and also really close, but not close enough to the playoffs. And that really hurts. Yeah. Um, looking at the playoff picture in the East, we get a, another round of Boston versus Toronto. If you were, uh, if you were betway and you had to set a betting line for that one, what would you set it at? I Did would make the Toronto Maple Leafs the favorites. Uh, mm -hmm. I would make it like a 110 or 120 or 125. Uh, part of that is because I'd anticipate the action that comes in on the Leafs. Part of that would be because I truly think the Leafs win that series. I think when you take a step back and you look at the Bruins year and some players that have exceeded expectations, Charlie Coyle was a great story. Um, their defense, I think still has some question marks. Their goaltending has been otherworldly. A, I can't get the, the taste of last year's first round loss out of my mouth. And B, if you were to look at the Bruins underlying numbers and metrics and sport logic did this, uh, last week and did a fantastic job, they believe the Bruins would have around 98 or 99 points if, Boston got league average goaltending. Clearly their goaltending far exceeded that. And that's a, that's a credit to them. But what if 
all of those things get equalized when it comes to the playoffs. And it's a big what if to ask, but I think it's a closer representation of what I think this Boston team actually is. I think they are closer to a 98 or 99 point team than a team that finished with almost 110 points. Is there a series that you're most excited to watch out of the East and the West? The only one I guess we're not fully determined on is Edmondson, but I think we can say it's going to be Vegas, right? I Jay actually asked me this this morning and I said, be careful. The Oilers are at a 72% shot. Like don't go booking any travel yet. It's a 72% shot for Vegas and, and a 28% shot for LA. Like that's not, that's not 95 and five. Um, so if it is Edmonton Vegas, that to me would be the third most intriguing first round series. Uh, first for me will be Winnipeg and Colorado. Um, and part of the intrigue is not just two really good teams going head to head. Part of the intrigue for me is the fact that Winnipeg absolutely whooped Colorado this season. 3 and 0, 17 to 4 uh goal differential. Sometimes a team has its number um and oddly enough the Jets if they win that and and Dallas wins, the Jets got smoked by Dallas this year. So make of that what you will. Uh that would be number 1 and number 2 is the Battle of Florida. I just think Tampa is they're going to go into the series as an underdog obviously. My question would be how much? I think Tampa Bay is a sleeping dragon heading into this playoffs, and that ties in to our Great Clips inbox question for you, Frank, with more than 4,400 hair salons throughout the U.S. and Canada. Great Clips is the world's largest hair salon brand and the official hair salon of the NHL. For more information about Great Clips, head to greatclips.com and learn a little bit about the check-in app. See the wait time, check in on your phone, get your haircut when you want. Great Clips, it's going to be great. Which wildcard team has the best chance of being Florida Panthers 2.0 and going, not just winning a round, but going on a deep run, Frank? I have told you how much I hate this question. I've Mm -hmm. referenced it in the rundown because Florida had 122 points the year before, and I don't really ever think of them as an authentic wildcard team, even though factually they finished in that spot. Uh, That said, um, I would say... It's got to be Tampa. To your point, like not really a wild card team, but they're in a wild card spot. So like that, it's the no brainer. I think if you're going to just reach and remove Tampa, it's just that it has to be Nashville. Oh, I, I would actually say it's probably whoever finishes in the second wild card spot, not Nashville. Oh, Hmm. They're going to have their hands tied. It's either LA or Vegas. They're playing Mm -hmm. Dallas. You think they have a chance to take down Dallas? I just think it's so close in the West that I, I I know that whatever it might be, 15, 20 points is going to separate them. It's not even going to be that many 15. It's these teams. Like I think LA Maybe not against the Oilers, but LA is good. They might give someone fits with their their neutral zone, and even if you beat them, it's probably going to be pretty taxing. And I know I'm not a believer in LA's goaltending, but and Vegas, you could make the same argument. Look at Aiden Hill and his numbers, big question marks. And Vegas as a team, you know, Jason Greger on the rundown this week was like, "I ain't scared of Vegas. Bring it on," basically more or less, and. I don't know. I just I have a funny feeling about one of the the second wild card team, whoever that ends up being. Should be interesting. A lot of people dropping their bold takes in the YouTube chat. If you want to try, you know, in a way, put your money where your mouth is. We're going to be doing a fun daily face off playoff parlay challenge over on the site. So you can head to dailyfaceoff.com for that and to read all of Frank Sir of all these great work. Thanks was- for doing this, Frank. I was going to say, if you really want to have some fun and go back and read my 32 bold predictions, which I audited yesterday and you can please feel free to make fun of me. Oh man. I read that yesterday. I was lounging by the pool and I, there was, I was laughing so hard at it. Cause like I, one, it's great that you go back and do this and don't just sit there and be like, what my 32 bold predictions? What are you talking about? You did nail a few though. Like there's a couple you should be proud of. Yeah. That's, I mean, look, when you're batting like 247 on the season, 
like you don't brag about the ones you get right. I, don't know, I think you deserve it. But that's the bit point of, of bold predictions, though, and which is why I can't see the chat, but I would remind everyone you have to make people think. You have to actually go out on a ledge in order for it to count as a bold prediction. If I'm just making the most obvious selection possible, what's the point in doing it? 100%. 100%. All right. Thanks for doing this, Frank. See you guys. Thanks for yeah. Frank Cervalli on the Star Mechanical Guest Line. Gentlemen, it's already 1 o'clock. we got to wrap up this show yeah. with... If it yeah, flew by uh, with the menu for our friends at DoorDash, 25% off zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. All you need to do is download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. Uh, today, no meaningful games in NHL at all, but we will still have a meaningful pre and post game show with our boy Aaron. Well, L- uh, LA, that- LA plays tonight, don't they? No. Or they Vegas plays play tonight? The Vegas play tonight? They both play Thursday? They do. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I just feel God. like Vegas is. In. So we think for sure game one is on the 21st or 22nd? Uh, I'm not but, saying for sure. What's that? I'm not saying for sure. But like if you were to put a percentage, it's north of 50. I would give it the same odds as what Frank just gave Vegas in LA then. 72 to 28. <laughs> they both play mm-hmm. tomorrow? Uh, yeah. yeah. So then they would probably want to advocate to... But playoffs start on the 20th. That's right. Uh, I don't know. And also, too, if they play LA, it'll be determined on like everything that's going on at the Staples Center as well. I've I'll checked. It's to... wide open. They don't have basketball games? Well, they've got the play in tournament, but I guess like because that outcome is TBD unless it's the Lakers done. won last night. So they're in. They're in. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, then now that well, adds a them. layer of. And complexity. the Clippers are in. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the the kings are the priority down there, are they? Uh, okay, so Craig in the chat said the Rogers Place website has the uh, has the Oilers game on Sunday. I don't see that anywhere, so I I don't know if that's legit or not. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'll I'll dig around on the website and try to find that. If anyone can find. It, where that is let me know because i'd love to know if that's legit or not so the lakers start on the road for their games so then their first game at the staple center is thursday the 25th so, so we then, would have to play on wednesday or we have to play on friday so they play at 8 p.m on thursday then on saturday at 6 30. so they got to play friday sunday in l.a but we're yeah. going to Vegas, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. Does it? <laughs> but that's probably why they haven't announced it yet on the off chance. I bet you it'll start Sunday if it's against Vegas, and it'll have to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday against LA, and that's why they're waiting to announce it. Maybe the 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 Clippers wouldn't interfere. They they're the home team, so they'd be on the same schedule as you others. Cool. There All right. you have it. Okay, there you go. The menu, uh, boards he's got pre-game in tonight. He's got post-game as well. So make sure you look for that here on the Oilers Nation YouTube. And in the meantime, go read something on OilersNation.com. Gregor's got the game notes up right now. There's a lot of good quality content going up on the site. Gregor's also live on the YouTube in an hour. And Bag Milk will be dropping a better late than never because it's Wednesday. And that's what he does. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for doing this. Hopefully, was my hotel Wi-Fi okay? Ish. Yeah, you yeah. can hear you perfectly. Your audio is perfect. Your face would just freeze on very funny moments. Mm. That's not bad. All right, thanks for tuning in oh. today, everybody. Enjoy the hockey game tonight. I am out to go scout my tickets at the Mullet Arena. Enjoy this. We'll be back tomorrow on New Mountain, Mountain Time. Going on, you will get the business done. All right, sounds good. See you, everybody. Thank you for watching Oilers Nation every day. Hit the subscribe button to never miss a show. And for more, visit OilersNation.com.